I absolutely get production for my garden all year round. I have fresh fruit almost all year round. The main time I don't have fruit, fruit production in a block that's not quite 600 square metres is when I, uh, is right between, uh, between winter and spring. So that's what people who do a lot of food growing in their garden call the hungry time. But I have my dehydrated fruit for that time. I have stewed fruit in the freezer. I have uh, fruit bottled. And so that's the time that I access those fruits. And there's also a certain amount of fruit that if you know how to store it well, like for instance kiwis, you can store them individually laid out in a cool spot on newspaper, in a cool shed or garage, and they can, kept, they can last quite a long time, or, fr or fruits in the fridge too. So it's just a matter of learning how to store your fruits. The other big thing that I didn't know about years ago when I planted my apple trees were looking into which fruits were the best keepers. So if I was planting my fruit garden now, I'd be staggering it so, and that's what I always put into my designs now, is apple trees that fruit very late and are good keepers. So you put in those varieties that fruit really late, so you've still got apples fruiting very late in the year. And then of course you plug in as many citrus as you can because they're often fruiting through winter. So mandarins and oranges and grapefruit and, and even finger limes are coming in in late, in uh, mid to late autumn. So then that gives you something until the wild strawberries or the alpine strawberries start in early spring and then the strawberries and then the other berries. So you've got that continuum. And, and I haven't even been trying to be as efficient as possible in this garden. I could be way more efficient and have way more fruit in this garden if I grew all espalier plants and really densely packed plants. Whereas I've got big trees just for the sake of having trees and vines because I, I like to have shade and atmosphere in the garden and nice places to sit and filtered air. So I could be far more productive with regard to that. And uh, annual veggies, well, I, I grow a lot of perennial vegetables. So some of those like to grow in the shade, so they just keep going. Um, then I have unusual vegetables like chocos that I use up uh, walls. So they'll kick in in winter and give me, you know, the choco vine would give me at least a hundred fruit. And that's in semi shade or it gets a little bit of shade but it really prefers to climb up to the sun so often in you know, often cases you can achieve that idea with a garden that might be in a lot of shade but if you put a structure up it can plants can get up to the sun avocados they they are uh, the bacon variety very productive now i'm just about to start picking my bacon avocados and they fruit from now till uh, i think they fruit till about august or so i'd have to look it up again now mm, they've just this is the first year i've had good crops out of them and they love the shade and they'll reach up to the sun as well. But I've got quite a lot of fruit hanging underneath in the shade. Kiwis, don't mind the shade. My neighbour Anna showed me how to prune kiwis and keep them really low. And they're actually best trained along a paling fence. And they can be very easily trained along like that. So very easy to access. She's an elderly lady who maintains her kiwis with no problem. And she's not the healthiest or the youngest lady in the street. And she will get 50 kilos some years from her kiwi, from her one female kiwi vine that she grows right along the length of her property and just one male kiwi. So they grow, and that's along the south side of a house that only gets maybe, probably doesn't get any sun in winter whatsoever. And it would get maybe an, half an hour or so or an hour in summer a day, if, if that, on a very shady, like the east or the southeast side of a house and a sideway incredible, um, lim incredibly limited light. So that's why I say there's no excuse not to grow <laughs> all your food in the shade, if you have shade. I have many subtropicals in my garden. So you look to South America for that quite often. So babagos, pepinos, tamarillo. I've now got a white sapote. Avocados, avocados often come from South America. I think they come from another part of the world as well. I'm not the greatest on origin. Fajoas. What else comes from South America? A lot of those really unusual fruits. Oh, of course, the yarkon, the oak ochre or New Zealand yam, called New Zealand yam, but it's really not from New Zealand, <laughs> really from South America. Um, that's, a, that's a bit of a list straight up off, off the top of my head. So there are lots of South American. They do really well in Melbourne. I know people access SGA information from all over Australia, but they, it's, it's, South American plants do really well in Melbourne because the climate's quite similar in a lot of cases to a lot of parts of South America. Thank you.